All right, guys, before we jump into today's video, I did want to shout out Fade Me, the merch brand we have here on the channel. We just dropped a bunch of new hoodies, getting ready for football season, fall season, all that good stuff. Go to fademe.store, check it out, support what we're doing here. Now let's get to the video. All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Monday night football week number three in the NFL. This is the first of two Monday night games. We'll also have a separate video for the Cincinnati and LA Rams game. If you're looking for my picks on that, make sure to go check out that video. But right now, we got the Bucks taking on the Eagles. Bucks as home dogs right now. Plus four and a half is the spread. The total is sitting at 45. I have a play on the spread, a lean on the total, two player props that I like, and then a player prop lean as well so i have potential up to five picks in today's video very excited to jump into that guys go ahead and hit that subscribe button hit that like button as well you guys have been absolutely crushing the like and subscribe button for the start of the football season so i am so grateful for that seriously from the bottom of my heart not just saying it because it's a cliche or you know the typical thing to say i am so thankful so thank you guys very very much but yeah let's go ahead and jump into today's game and i'll just come out and say it I like the Eagles minus the four and a half points. Now, it seems like the public pick right now or the consensus is that this 2-0 Bucks team is the move at plus four and a half points. And I just don't see how. I don't see how Baker Mayfield is going to repeat what he did last week. That's kind of point number one at the forefront of my mind. I don't see Mike Evans going off again. I think the Bucks are due for some regression, whereas the Eagles seem like they're just kind of knocking on the door of turning back into, you know, being in the Super Bowl, that caliber type of a team so I like the Eagles minus the four and a half points I talked about Baker Mayfield right ba Baker Mayfield has struggled um over his career obviously you know highly touted gets drafted top and then all of a sudden it's like okay roller coaster of events here but let's take a peek at what he's done we're using the outlier tool guys if you want to check out outlier I have a seven day free trial link in the pinned comment you guys will see a bunch of outlier in today's video but let's look at Baker Mayfield after a great game here we go 30, uh, 317 yards last game right if we look at last season look at when he has his big games like 235 week number one then he goes to 145 he has 230 over here right then he goes to 111 230 and then 131 now I understand that this Eagles defense is pretty tough when it comes to the passing game like um in terms of tough being like the Eagles stink at the pass right now like Kirk Cousins torched them Mac Jones torched them I will say I think those guys are more sort of um or, or better pass throwers than we're seeing Baker Mayfield or have seen Baker Mayfield be but I don't think Baker Mayfield can combine two games in a row like that and go off even if he's playing the worst pass defense in the world. I think he's going to make some mistakes out here. And one thing that I do like about this game pick here is the fact that, yes, the Eagles have their holes on defense, but so far through two weeks, not a big sample size, the run defense is there. First in the league when it comes to fewest rushing yards allowed, okay? So we're looking at this saying, okay, well, their run defense is great. Shouldn't that mean Baker Mayfield's going to pass more and have a lot more completions and a lot more yards? That's where you lose me. I think that they're going to force Baker Mayfield to throw a lot more, and I don't like the odds of the Bucks with the ball in Baker Mayfield's hands. I'm not buying what he's selling just yet. If he's going to be the focal point where this game lives or dies on his shoulders, I think more often than not, it's going to die. I'm rooting for the kid. You know, he's had ups and downs. He's been on multiple teams. Like, he struggled. I get it. I just don't buy into him just yet. If he goes out there and proves me wrong this season, hell, I'm wearing Fade Me merch, right? Fade Me dot store. I could see him, you know, turning it around and having sort of a nice little Cinderella story of a career. But right now, if you're going to say Baker Mayfield's going to need to put the ball in his hands and make plays, I am not buying that sell, okay? So the fact that the Eagles are going to force Tampa Bay to pass a lot, I think bodes really well for this Eagles team. They do have some injuries. Um, we can jump back into outlier here so you guys can see it. The injuries on the right side, plenty of injuries on the side, especially for, uh, you know, when it comes to some of their defensive players. But nonetheless, I do still think a lot of these guys could play. There's Some are questionable, um, some may not. But I think that, you know, they do have the guys... I think they have the talent. The defense just hasn't clicked yet. I'm not trying to say that it has, but the run defense has. So if you're putting the ball in Baker Mayfield's hands, I think that that's going to bode well for the Eagles. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. I feel like a broken record saying it. Pretty much, I'm just not buying Baker Mayfield. And I'm sorry if you're rooting for the guy. I'm sorry if you're a Bucks fan. I need to see it a little bit more. It needs to be proven to me because this is still an Eagles team that is really, really good. They just haven't fully clicked yet. Against this Bucks team, I think they have a chance to fully click. In terms of my lean on 
on the total. I am looking at the under. It was 46 when I originally started kicking this idea around. Um, it's now down to 45. Again, it's going to stay as lean. Keep an eye on the pin com to see if it becomes a final play. But I do think that this is going to be kind of a, a game in which it's one-sided. I don't know if the Bucks are really going to be able to move the ball all that successfully. And the Eagles can go out there and probably drop 17. So I think it's going to be like a 7, uh, 20, uh, 27, not 17, a 27, 14 type of a game, which obviously uh, would be well under there. So I'm going to leave it as a lean. We do have some weather to keep an eye on, too. I'm um, you know, recording this a couple days in advance. It looks like right around, I think it was like 9 p.m. Eastern time, which this game kicks off. Uh, it was at 7.15, so, you know, right towards the, the back half of the game. Looks like there is going to be some rain um, and some storming, maybe minor, so that could help an under as well. But that is the lean as of right now. I just don't necessarily see the Bucks carrying their own weight. And I, I've told you guys before, right, when we talk about these primetime games, like, I like the idea of the underdogs. Like, I, I think that if the Bucks go out there and upset the Eagles big time, like, Next week, I'm rooting for it. But as a sports better, as an analytical better, I'm just not sold yet on, on this type of a team. But let's go ahead and jump into the player props here. The first player prop that I am looking at is going to be A.J. Brown over four and a half receptions. I like the spot for him this week. I think they're going to really try and get him going. Um, he had seven receptions in week one and then only four in week number two against Minnesota. But that was kind of the Devontae Smith week anyways. Devontae Smith was going off. Um, and I think that this is obviously a spot where A.J. Brown has a good match against Jamil Dean, um, who's just a little bit smaller than him. A.J. Brown's going to be able to cook him on slants and sort of physical slants over the middle as well. I could see four and a half almost happening like in the first half. So uh, pick number one here in terms of a final play of a player prop is going to be A.J. Brown over four and a half receptions. I think they're going to try and get him going. He really hasn't, um, I wouldn't say, uh, he hasn't really broken out yet. He only had 79 yards in week number one. Um, no touchdowns yet this season. I do think they're going to try and get him involved, and I do like the matchup. He plays most of his snaps, snaps from the left wide receiver spot there, meaning he's going to have that Jamel Dean matchup, which he has like 30 yards on him. I think they're similar heights, but I, I like the idea of you know them going to A.J. Brown early and often. All right. Right, second pick is going to be Rashad White here. Uh, over 16 and a half receiving yards. We're not looking at his rushing. We already touted, uh, I guess, touted the uh, idea of what we have um, in terms of this Eagles defense against the run. But what we didn't talk about yet is how much they struggle against running backs catching the ball so far. And again, it's through two weeks, but that's the data that we have. They are the second, they've averaged the second most targets to running backs. This is all per game numbers. So second most targets per game to running backs, fourth most receptions per game to running backs, and the sixth most receiving yards per game to running backs. I like the spot for Rashad uh, White to be able to just catch. You know, his line, I think right now is two and a half or three and a half in terms of receptions. He could do this on one reception. That's why I'm taking this uh, receiving yards line instead of looking at uh, his receptions because obviously the Eagles still allow a lot of targets to the running backs. I think he can catch a screen or anything like that and take one for 20 yards and cash this fairly easily. And then the next one we're looking at is going to be Devontae Smith over 23 and a half for his longest reception. Now, this is a lean. I know that we talked about Devontae Smith. We showed the injuries there. He does have a hobbled hamstring right now. I think his quad is actually injured as well. I think he told the reporter at some point he's going to be okay for game time, but we leave it as a lean for right now because I don't want all of a sudden to be like, oh, well, he's actually playing at 50%, and we took this line at 23 and a half. But if we check out Outlier, look at how he has started um, or ended the season last year. And like we talked about, you know, end of the season last year, and seriously, uh, you look at it from this perspective, he hit this in seven of his last nine games. And you look at this season, week number one didn't look all that great for him, but look Look at his game in week number two. 63 was his longest reception. In terms of his receptions line, he only had four receptions last week. So they were looking to him deep down the field, and he ended up with 131 receiving yards. And if we look at his air yards here, this is a guy that has an average depth of target of 15 yards or so, and then his yak is crazy. He's got 37 yards after catch. So we're looking at a guy in Devontae Smith that is getting targeted 15 yards downfield and running with the ball afterwards plenty. I love this spot for from um, the Bucks, also averaging plenty are, you know, they've been fairly soft when it comes to uh, wide receivers kind of cooking them as well. We've seen um, Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison both had deep balls thrown to them and completed. Um, DJ Moore and Chase Claypool also had deep balls completed to them. So whether you're not the, you're the one or the two as a wide receiver on your team, you have a chance of catching a big um, play against this Bucks team. But guys, if you do want to check out Outlier, I did just sh show you guys some of the tools, but they have plenty of other stuff on there. You can get seven days free with the link 
in the pinned comment, it's absolutely a no-brainer. Like, I don't understand how I say, hey, it's free for seven days. And someone's like, yeah, I don't think so. I'll do the manual research, right? I'll go on Google and go, player X, receptions last game. No, no, no. Outlier does it for you. Green means good. Red means bad. If you're smart enough to understand that, and I can say this because I'm a certified dummy. If you're smart enough to understand that green means good, red means bad, you can profit with Outlier. And even after your seven-day free trial, if you choose to continue your subscription, it's only $19.99 a month. That can pay for itself like that. It is a really cool tool. And I only showed you like a little bit of it right there, guys. Go check it out for yourself. And I talked to them and I have some beta access. The tools that are coming in the next couple of weeks are mind blowing. So go check out Outlier, guys. You will not regret it. And yeah, that's what we got for week number three, Monday Night Football game number one. To recap here, we have a final play of a spread, minus four and a half in favor of the Eagles. We have a lean under 45 slash under 46, depending on where we get it, on the uh, the total there. And it's a lean again. And then in terms of player props, two plays that I'm locking in right now, A.J. Brown over four and a half receptions, and then over 16 and a half receiving yards for Rashad White. And then our last play is a lean, Devontae Smith over 23 and a half for his longest reception. So guys, let's have a good Monday night football. Make sure to check out all the other videos on the channel. We're pumping out content like absolute crazy right now. But yeah, if you made it this far in the video, go ahead and drop your favorite plays in the comments. And uh, yeah, drop number 11 because we're about 11 minutes into the video. Let me know if you're a real one and if you made it to the end. But uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys in the next one, all right? Peace out.